Legends and Mysteries, Rezalazir. Rezalazir, the Whisper and the Bone. Something in Rezil was telling him he shouldn't be here. Something deep. Something resembling fear. He knelt, examining the dust-covered pile at his feet. The skulls had been discarded with little care some time ago. Decades, maybe longer. The doors carved into the rock face were arcane, dark, gothic, other, and large. The jagged finery of their archway spoke to an artistry that only served to strengthen the sinking feeling in his gut. Rezal had come to Luna in search of nightmares, and after his long journey, from the growing city beneath the Traveler to the ends of the earth and beyond, he found himself face to face with the remnants of stories he'd hoped were nothing but lies. He stood, a large man made small against the massive, looming doorway. The knot in his stomach was telling him to turn back. Instead, he moved forward, toward the doors, sealed as they were for ages untold. After only a few steps, a shrill, heavy scraping cut the air. The massive doors were opening. Russell steadied his rifle as a lone shape, floating just above the ground, appeared from the deep black beyond the threshold. The figure in the doorway, a dark, ethereal woman cloaked in tattered ceremony and armored with ornate bones, danced in the air. Rezal and the demon woman held their ground, contemplating one another. With no warning, the silent intimacy of the moment was broken by a booming, angry call from deep within the doorway. The sound, thick and pained, echoed across the narrow valley, then fell silent. After a beat that felt like eternity, the figure backed away into the dark. The doors remained wide, an invitation or a dare. Rizal did not know, nor did he care. The mighty titan took steps forward. Uh... I'm not sure this is a good idea. His goat's concern was impossible to mistake. I'm not sure that matters. We've come. We've seen. Maybe the best course here is to warn others. Gather an army. Maybe. I'm just saying. It's possible you can't handle whatever it is we've upset here. We've woken nightmares. Russell's attention was singular, focused intently on the dark beyond the threshold. The hive were supposed to be gone. The ghost mulled the full consequences of this mistaken belief. They've been silent for... They're not silent anymore. That scream? These doors? They're best left alone. I can't do that. Rizal continued forward, toward the dark, toward the unknown. Stay here. Excuse me? Get distance. We don't know what this is. What's coming? Can't risk you too close to an unknown. And if you fall where I can't find you? If I fall... If I don't return, run. Tell the others. Warn them all. There are worse things than pirates. Russell studied his rifle and stepped into the dark as his ghost lingered. Hours passed. More? Time was lost in this place and with it any remembrance of hope, of promise, of purpose in the longing for a brighter tomorrow. Down amongst the shadows there were no tomorrows. Down in the abyss there was no hope. Russell's footfalls echoed, lonely, measured steps with no guarantee of purchase. At any moment, the world could fall away and he would be lost, the forgotten hero who foolishly sought nightmares. Then a presence, sweeping and dreamlike. Russell leveled his rifle. He could sense the witch, but found it impossible to track her in the dark. Russell opened fire, short, focused bursts to light the ebony corridor. The demon witch circled just beyond the reach of each burst's glow. Russell kept firing, using the short flickers of light to gain bearing. The witch laughed, and a thick black cloud engulfed Russell. The titan kept firing, but his movements were restricted. The cloud confined him, caged him. He could hear her moving just beyond his sight as her laughter rose in pitch, cutting into Russell's mind and soul like a tempered blade. Russell flinched as the wicked woman began to speak in a tongue that resembled torture more than language. The pain was searing, complete. The demon approached the writhing hero. As she spoke, her violent words began to take shape, morphing from syllables of death to a known offering of haunted human languages. The demon woman leaned in close and whispered intimately. Russell's ears bled as she spoke. I am the end of Maros. Zor, the blessed Zor, the betrothed. I am of the coming storm. These are not my words, but prophecy. Your light will one day shatter and die. For now, it simply offends. And you, dear, sweet, fragile thing shall be made to suffer for your transgressions upon this holy ground. As the witch fell silent, 
Her hateful voice was replaced by a growing chorus of hungry, manic chittering and the rising thunder of an approaching flood. Rezel had come looking for the terrors that hide just beyond the light. He found them. Or maybe they found him. Legend, Rezal Azir, The Triumphant Fall The trigger clicked. Another empty clip slid from its purchase and dropped to the dark stone floor. It was the last. His rifle was dry. Rezal spun the weapon in his hand, grabbing hard around the barrel like a club. A new wave of chittering death was upon him, fragile but aggressive, overwhelming in their number and oppressive in their rage. The stock of the rifle connected with skull after skull. They caved and fell, like the others before. The pile of vanquished nightmares, half bone, half dust, grew at Russell's feet. There was a calm to him, an ease. The chaos of battle was no time to panic. His swing was wide but measured, no wasted movement. A demon clawed at his back, then another. They were heavier than their frail frames would suggest. He gave a shrug and a shake, turned and hammered the stock hard into the side of one creature's temple. Its skull splintered and the stock lodged deep in the wet, chalky mass beneath the bone. He made a fleeting effort to break the rifle free, but had to let it fall away as the rush of demons increased. Russell kicked the other monster to the floor, stepping on its neck while shifting to backhand a throng of attackers eager to make their killing lunge. If the rifle, his battle-worn inferno, had served to thin the herd and buy Russell time to assess the whole of the situation, his rose would see him through. It always had. The titan, awash in the ash and gore of his enemies, pulled his cannon and in one motion feathered the trigger to level the wretched beasts closest to him. The bloom from each shot lit the cavern with flashes of red heat, a garden of angry roses blossoming in pointed defiance of this vile, hateful kingdom of shadows. On the far end of the sea of gnashing maws, the wicked woman danced in the air, watching. Waiting? Rezel's cannon was loaded and ready to fire as if an afterthought. He let loose another barrage and six more demons slumped, lifeless upon the pile. The witch unleashed a violent cry, and as quickly as it had begun, the onslaught subsided. The chittering fell from a deafening roar to an eerie chorus humming through the ebon haze just beyond his sight. Vessel stood, straightened his tired back, and took long, deep breaths. The storm had not been weathered. He could feel it in his gut. He stood now, not at peace, but within the eye, the swirling, terrible lull before the waves came crashing once more. The wicked woman laughed, a horrid, grating screech, followed by footsteps, heavy and hard. Thoom. 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 Rizzle squinted against the dark as he slid new lead into his cannon cylinder. A shape took form, approaching him from the deep. A being of might and mass that dwarfed the titan. A cleaver the size of an ordinary man, bigger, hung effortlessly in its hand. Its body was thick with ornate bone, a living armor that was one with the beast. Rizzle let out an accepting sigh. The creature walked like a man burdened by untold sin, lumbering and slow, though its stride covered ground with unnatural ease. To wrestle the approaching horror cut an imposing silhouette not unlike that of an ancient, disgraced knight. Maybe it had been heroic once. Maybe here in these shadows, to the watchful eyes of the wicked woman and her rotting horde, it was a hero still, only for a darker, sinister cause. The thought intrigued Rezal. The fight he had come all this way to find, the enemy he had hoped was nothing but a legend's lie, seemed eager to greet him. He smiled beneath his helm, then spun his rose with a confident hunter's twirl, before steadying his aim and fanning its hammer once more. The angry bloom lit the dark. Six shots, center mass. Russell's lead pinged off a sudden, shimmering wall of black. The knight had conjured a protective barrier as if from nothing. Unable to comprehend the creature's arcane methods, dark magic or unimagined tech, or even a joining of the two, Rezal didn't care. He reloaded and prepared to face the unknown. As the ethereal shield faded, the beast raised its blade and let loose an aggressive, inhuman roar. Hell's own battle cry. Rezal accepted the challenge. His rose gripped tightly in his vice grip, the titan charged forward. He would meet the shadow's rage head on. Two days had passed since Rezal stepped from the dark corridors beneath the moon back into the light. His ghost pressed him for details time and again. He wanted to know all he could of the wicked woman and her promise of suffering. Of the sea of mindless, chittering death. Of the hulking night in Rezal's epic battle. The ghost was enthralled and deeply concerned. If the monsters below the moon were active and aware, the city must be warned. Rezal agreed. As they watched another earth rise from the lonely quiet of the lunar surface and planned their long journey home, 
Russell pulled a fragmented bone from the pouch that hung on his left hip, a reminder of the evil that lurked beyond the light and the last remnants of the wicked woman's betrothed. And while he recounted once more the events of his time in the shadows, he took his rose from its holster and began grafting the bone to its steel frame, just another trophy from another battle won. It was only later, and far too late, that the first whispers came and the bones revealed their true, jagged purpose. Really? You just keep those on the table? No, you'll notice there's a case there. He normally keeps them in that. Ah. On his table. Oh. Well, I mean, it's under his house. Who else is going <laughs> to be running this thing?